Um, that also brings to mind, so if you're, you're wanting to upgrade the system and uh, you decide one way to go is, or first way most people go, and it's the obvious logical way, is to replace all the speakers with, with a higher quality speaker. That's perfectly acceptable, it's, it makes sense, um, and it'll usually have a, a, an acceptable result. Like I said, personally, I would not replace the rear deck speakers, at least not at first. I would take the money I would spend on those and either uh, buy better ones for the front channels or, you know, do something else with it. But anyway, um, you can you can do that. You can replace the speakers, the head, leave the head unit as is. Uh, when, you, when you buy the replacement speakers, you're going to want to be sure and get uh, some speaker adapters with them. If you get them from a place like Crutchfield, they'll actually come free with it. But uh, this will allow... When you replace the speaker, it will allow you to, you know, reuse the factory wiring harness. It, you know, this will be in the door. When you put your replacement speaker in, it's not going to have anything that, and that, then that's where the adapters come in. You get those and then plug it into the factory wiring harness and then you just plug this into the speaker. Um, now, uh, if you, if you decide that uh, that sounds great, the new speakers are good and all, but I just need more volume. So you're gonna wanna add an amp, obviously. There's a couple different ways to go on adding an amp, but I'll tell you, and I, I think everybody will tell you, the easiest, most straightforward, best way to do that would be to get uh, an audio adapter, like I think PAC, I've pretty much only ever seen PAC audio module, uh, the adapter modules. But what it is, is uh, you'll, you'll have this adapter, this interface, on the back of the head unit. You'll, you'll unplug the wiring harness from the back of the head unit. And then your adapter, you'll plug that into your adapter. And then the adapter just went into the head unit, right? So it just slips in line. And now all that does, or what that does, that's so nice, is that will give you your RCA outs to, because if you're gonna add an amp, you've got to feed the amp the sound signals that are coming out of the head unit. You can't just take the speaker wire and run them into the amp. I guess you can, that's not a good way to do it. Uh, you have to take those speaker signals, convert them to a low level signal, an RCA signal, and from there run the RCAs into the amp. Well, how do you convert them into an RCA signal? That's where this comes in. You plug that in, now you've got RCA outs, plug your RCAs in, run them to your amp, boom. Um, now this, it's the best way to go, it's the most straightforward way to go, it's the easiest way to go, but with all of that comes one drawback, and that would be expense. I believe these are like $200, $250, and you may even have to buy an extra little adapter deal if you want to keep the steering wheel controls. Anyway, um, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a cost, but the only other option really that you have would be to, and I've done this on mine just because I already had the, the lock. You can add a line output converter that will take speaker level inputs and turn them into RCAs. Now, um, why wouldn't everybody just do that? Well, because it's messy. It's messy and it's and it's labor intensive, right? Um, You've got to cut the factory speaker wires, run new wire back to your lock, that's ends, run new wire from the, uh, from the amp back up here to where you cut, and then that will send the signals out to the speakers. And that's only half of it. When you're, once you're at the lock with the speaker wires coming in, you've got to wire in the, the uh, line up converters will have a really high resistance. The head unit will see that and think that the speaker wires are, have been cut or shorted and they'll basically cut all the sound. So to hide the fact that you're using that line up converter from the head unit, you've got to wire in a resistor on each channel, right? So if you're running all four channels into the line up converter, you've got to have four resistors and wire them in. And that will hide the fact that it's running into the line up converter allowed to, to accept the signals and then you can send them to the end. Anyway, it's, it's all messy and it's terrible and it's labor intensive and the best way to go, if you can afford it, is to get the audio adapter.
And by the way, this is for a 2008-2014 Charger Challenger, well, any Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Uh, I can't use it because it's four systems that come with a factory amp. Mine, none of mine have a factory amp, so if anybody needs one, you can have this one. I would love to charge you for it, but it was actually given to me, so I would feel kind of bad charging for it. Anyway, um, that's adding an amp, right? So uh, that, that's obviously a, um, adding an amp after you've upgraded the speakers is, is a way to go. I would submit yet another option would be to add the amp first, right? Keep in all the stock speakers, get a small amp, want your adapter, but get a small amp, Add it to the system, now have that amp power these stock speakers. Now obviously these are poor quality, so amping them in one way will just amplify the fact that they're crappy, but, and I've done this a couple of times now on two different cars, it's only once you get to full, close to full volume that, that with that amp, that it really, you really hear, oh crap, I'm just amping really crappy speakers. As long as you have it configured correctly, and you keep your volume between half and three quarters, it really sounds, it sounds much better than without the amp, that's for sure. It doesn't sound as good as a system that is set up correctly with all aftermarket equipment, no. But it will sound better than an ampless system, that's for sure. And one advantage to that amp first approach, in my opinion, is you can then buy, when, when you're ready to upgrade your speakers, now you can buy the speakers to match the amp. Instead of, if you do speakers first, you're gonna to need to buy speakers that will work well on a low, in a low wattage environment. Then if you add an amp, now you're gonna go back and, well, the, the amp is gonna have more power than what the speakers you initially purchased. You know, it's gonna be outside their butter zone. So now you may have to go back and repurchase new speakers. Why not do the amp first? And then when you do your speakers, you can buy them to match the amp. That's just an option. That's one way to do it. I've done it, I liked it, I mean, Probably six one half dozen the other. Um, 